He's staying real close to the stuff that he's trying to tell them. I don't ever do that. Let's be careful as Christians that we're not pointing the judgmental finger at somebody because they do this when we're staying real close to this. Please, let's not be the person to tell somebody, you can't watch this, but you're watching that. You can't do this, but you're... But let's be real careful to make sure we ain't hanging out at the Tanner's house. Peter says, I've never done that. And, and, and the, the spiritual reason behind this was, was not to get Peter to eat a hamburger. He was talking to him about the Gentiles. Because believe it or not, up until that time, the Jews and the Gentiles still weren't really, they weren't buddies. But guess what? They're still not buddies. But what happened was, is the Jewish people, even after Jesus had unleashed the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost in the upper room and 3,120 people got saved on the first initial day of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Sister Gay, there were still Jews that thought the Gentiles couldn't have this. There were still Jewish people that thought unless you were physically circumcised, you couldn't experience the infilling of the Holy Ghost. There were still people that thought that they could put God on a leash or in a box and say, this is just for a few certain folk. And the dream was meant to say, I know that y'all think that the Gentiles can't have this, but please, Jesus said, please do not call what I have cleansed unclean. Please don't tell somebody that I'm trying to save. Please don't tell somebody that I'm trying to save that they can't have what you have because my spirit is for everybody. So guess what, Peter? All those folks that you think it's not for, it's for them to rise, kill, and eat. And Peter gets up and he goes preaching to the Gentiles. And the Gentile race, so to speak, or the Gentile people were introduced to the Holy Ghost through Peter because he had this dream where God says, I know what you heard. I know what you saw. I know that's all that you know. But I'm about to change the menu. I know that's all you know. Because that's all you've heard and that's all you've seen. But I'm about to change the menu. There's about to be something new and exciting on the menu. Can I just say it to you the way that I feel it? Because it's the way that I wrote it down. God is about to blow some people's minds. I promise you. Some people are so fixated on all that they know and all that they've seen and all that they've heard. They're not even ready for God to put something new on the menu. Now, as soon as you stay there, you're like, uh-oh, he's about to be a compromiser. He's about to go be one of them charismatic folks. Can we get away from these labels and titles? And I, you can call me whatever you want. I'm not really looking for your approval. My name needs to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, not your Facebook page. I'm not really looking for the approval of man, but I'm telling you, God is about to save some folks that some people think ain't worth saving. All right, right. God's about to pour his spirit out on some people that you've already written off. God's about to bring some people into the house of God that you've already said, it ain't never going to happen. And when God does it, there ain't no way them Gentile folks because they're not, I'm trying to tell you the real reason, they're not circumcised. Now this is the adult class, but I won't even go into the, you know what circumcision is, right? If anybody doesn't, you need to call me on the phone. <laughs> circumcision is in the end. And they actually thought because Gentiles were not required, that doesn't mean that some of them weren't, but they weren't required to be circumcised because it was a Jewish thing. It was something that Abraham started way back in the day. And that what they actually thought was they're going to take this 50-year-old guy yeah. and if you want the Holy Ghost, before you do that, you need to come in this tent right. and let us circumcise you. <laughs> I remember...
my boys. They're like, we're going to take Austin and do, oh, okay. The next thing I heard, ah! They didn't know no better. They're like, one day old. Guess what they're known? Circumcision. For five. How about the 50 year old guy? Come in here and let us circumcise you or you can't live for God. Go, I'm about to go out on some thin ice. God's about to save some people here. Yes. Yes. That you've already looked at him and says, as long as that, you can't have this. Right. 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 Amen. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Yes. Peter says, I've never done that. I don't know exactly how old he was at this particular time, Brother Clester, but he says, I have never eaten any of the stuff in that sheet. And God says, get up and eat it. Do not call what I have cleansed unclean. Don't tell me how to do my job. And God is saying in 2022, I'm about to save the people that you don't think are going to ever be saved. I'm about to bring somebody in that you think's never coming in. I'm about to save some folks. I'm about to put some new items. That's all they knew. God was changing the menu. Right. But I want to talk to some people this morning because I this is kind of what spurned the message. Brother Matt, you know, he always talks about he listens to songs and Brother Clester gets his messages from Sister Amy. I mean sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. A little bit. Not a joke. <laughs> I'm watching the movie. I'm watching a movie the other day. Oh, there's your problem, Brother Daryl. You think God talked to you while you were watching the movie? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm watching a movie the other day. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a movie. It was a, a what do they call them, where they, they mix the documentary and the movie? Documentary. That thing. Documentary. It's based on truth. I love those kind of things. Because a lot of the things I remember, I'm like, oh, I remember when that happened. I remember when she killed him. I remember when she stole that. I remember when they blew that up. So I'm like, wow. So I'm watching one the other day, and, and, and the mom killed the dad. Shot him in the face with a sawed-off shotgun. So you're, you're kind of going through, and you're, you know, some of you already wrote her off. All I had to say was she shot him with a sawed-off shotgun. You're like, let her burn! You're going through, and I'm like, I wonder, you know, wonder what happened here, because they don't always, they don't interview her in her orange jumpsuit, so you're not sure if she's behind bars or not. And they're talking to her, and they're talking to the two kids, and they talk about the things that she went through, and how the husband beat her, and tried to choke her to death, tried to kill her on multiple occasions. Are you justifying the fact that she shot her husband in the face with the sawed-off shotgun? No. Just let me get through the story here. And they're interviewing the children who are now grown in their 30s. The mom, yes, in case you're wondering, she went to prison for 25 years. She got out on parole after 25 years. The two children, there was a son and a daughter. They were talking especially to the son. And he was explaining the things that he went through. And he said, I abused drugs. And I abused alcohol. And I beat my wife. And I abused my children. And he said, I'm not making excuses because everything that I did was wrong and everything that I did was bad. But he said, you need to understand something. That's all I knew. That's all I saw. My dad handled problems with his fist. So guess what I do? I handle problems with my fist. My parents were both addicted. So guess what I knew when I was growing up? I knew addiction. I watched my father abuse my mother and he said that I'm not justifying it, but I did it because it's what I saw. It's what I knew. It's all that I ever observed. 
And he said, it took me a long time to break that cycle because it was all I ever knew. And I know what it's like when you have a voice that tells you you can't change that. I know what it's like when a voice will come to you and say, that's part of part of you. Just part of who you are. It's in your DNA. It's in your genes. It's just, it, it's a generational thing. There's nothing you can do. Peter says, I've never done that. All I know, all I've seen my whole life, all I've ever been taught is this. And you're telling me now it's time to do this? I've never done that. Yeah. I've never experienced that. See, personally, just personally, I want to I wanna, I wanna be personal this morning. I don't know what it's like to have a parent that doesn't say I love you. Because most of my parents said it. I don't know what it's like to not get a hug and a kiss and maybe tucked in at night. Because that's what I experienced. That's what I know. That's all I saw. And I taught my kids the same thing. Austin's 24 years old. Did I get it right? <laughs> Austin's 24 years old. Guess what I say to him every time before we walk away from each other, before we hang up the telephone, before I go to work in the morning, I walk in the bathroom and it's usually him and my wife and they're getting ready to go to work and I leave first. And the last thing I do is say to both of them, I love you and I walk. That's, that's what I know. Right. Right. Some people don't know that. Right. You know what they know? Dad deep mom's face in. You know what dad does when he can't handle the day at work? He doesn't come home from work. I'm about to fight a devil right now. He doesn't come home from work. He goes to the bar and he drinks it away because guess what? That might be what he knows, but I'm here to fight a devil and let a devil know that God is about to change the menu. That's all he, that's all he know. There's a cycle here. If you'll let me help you. There's a cycle here. See what happens is the dad can't handle what happens at work. So he does it with alcohol. If alcohol doesn't feed the beast enough, he might turn to drugs. All because he couldn't handle what was going on at work. Why well, he's got the wife sitting at home waiting for the husband to come home. And the husband doesn't come home. Not just one day, not just two days. On a regular basis, the husband gets off at 3. He shows up at home at 11.30. Just enough time to go to bed and get up the next day and do it. The same thing. Ha! Keep going. I'm about to fight some devils. Now let me tell you what happens. See what happens is there's a cycle here. Not because the wife doesn't love the husband. Not because the wife's not faithful to the husband. But the devil will make sin real convenient for you. So while the husband's at the bar drinking because he can't handle work, here comes Casanova to the wife and say, your husband doesn't treat you right. Your husband doesn't take care of you right. If you let me. That's all they know, Brother Glester. That's all they know. And it becomes generational because the kid said, Dad did it. And the girl says, Mom did it. And guess what happens? The menu never changes. That's all they know. It becomes normal to them. If all you ever had was saltine crackers, you'd think those were the best things in the world. Saltine crackers are great because you never had a steak. Right? All that was on the menu was doom. 
If all that was on the menu was doom, gloom, and despair, guess what you expect when you open the menu? You expect it to be bad. You expect it to be negative. You expect to have hurt. You expect to have pain. You expect to be let down. You expect somebody to hurt you. You expect somebody to stab you in the back. But I'm here to tell you, if you'll let God, he'll change the menu. Your life can be different. You don't have Peter said, Peter said, Peter said, yes. no, God. Yep. I've always done it this way. Listen to me. Peter, the guy that had the keys to the kingdom, that preached the message on the day of Pentecost, yeah, that same Peter. Guess what, honey? We're past Acts 2. Right. We're in Acts 10. Peter said, No, God! I've never done it that way. And God said it to him three times. Rise, kill, eat. Rise, kill. Eat, rise, kill, eat. I've seen the menu before. I know how this ends. <laughs> it's time to look. I've seen the menu. I know how this ends. I know all life's got to offer me. I've been to this restaurant 563 times. I know what to get. I've been down this road before. I'll just get myself through it. Don't worry about me, preacher boy. I'll be okay. I if I can see the yeah. devil right now, I'll yeah. punch him right in his proverbial throat because I know what he says. You've been down this road before. You can handle it on your own. I know how this ends. I don't need no religion. I don't need no Jesus. I don't need no Holy Ghost. I can do this on my own. But God is telling me not once but twice. He's come to you before. He's coming to you again. If you'll let me, I'll change your life. If you'll let me, I'll make my man you look different. He had to tell him three times. <laughs> Anybody in here ready for a new menu? Anybody in here tired of the same old thing happening in your life? The broken record. I know how this happens, so I'm just used to it now. I'll get through today just like I got through yesterday. And I'll get through tomorrow, just like I did last week. This is just how it works, preacher. Don't worry about it. I'm used to eating this. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. God's not going to force anything on you. God didn't force Peter. He told him three times. But he didn't force him. Now, what I mean by that is this. Peter could have continued to say no because I read Leviticus 11. And I know those Gentiles can't have the Holy Ghost unless we circumcise them, so no. And guess what? God would have raised somebody else up to preach to the Gentiles. They still would have got the gospel. It just wouldn't have been through Peter. Somewhere on the face of the earth, the Bible says he addeth to the church daily. Somewhere Someone on this big blue ball we call earth, someone's going to listen. Somewhere, someone's going to say, I'm tired of that old menu. I'm tired of the same old stuff happening. I'm tired of the devil lying to me and telling me that's always the way it's going to be because that's all you know. It's all you've ever heard. It's all you've ever seen. So you're used to it. You've become numb to it. I can get through it, preacher. Don't worry about it. And there's a whole bunch of people today that are going to say, I'll just stick to my chicken fingers. But there's a God that's saying, if you want something new, first thing you got to do is rise. God's not going to make you do nothing. Because I know what you're saying right now. I know. Because the devil knows how to use a message. The devil's like, yeah, you've never done that before. You've never did that, that church thing. You don't want to be Jesus freak. You've never done that. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll be okay. It'll all work out. And God is saying right now to you, 
I'm not new in you. Do you want it to change? Do you want it to be different? Or are you going to be like Peter and say, nah, never done that before? Rise, kill, and eat. Why do you say kill when you point at an altar? That's what happened in the Bible. Every time something came to an altar, it died there. They put sacrifices on the altar. They gave it to God. The Bible says he gave them beauty for ashes. The devil's still in here sitting on someone's shoulder, so i got to keep fighting. I know what it's like to come to an altar with all kinds of stuff attached. You want something new from God, give it what you have. All I've got is despair. All I've got is letdown. All I've got is trouble. All I've got is anger. All I've got is bitterness. All I have is vices. All I have is addictions. All I have is a bottle. All I have is a pack of cigarettes. All I've got is drugs. All I've got is, this is all I've got. God's saying, why do you not rise, kill, and eat? Because if you will let me, I can change you. But you have to rise and kill. And wouldn't it be wonderful to get that smorgasbord of heaven? Wouldn't it be wonderful to say, I'm eating from that same plate of anger and bitterness and despair and letdown and addiction. I ate that for two I've eaten that for too long. I'm not eating it anymore. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rise. I'm going to kill. And I'm going to eat from the master's table before I leave this church house. I'm about to eat from the new. The menu. Who wants to rise, kill? And eat. Look, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it a little bit easy. Everybody rise. I'm going to stop. Preacher, man, this is all I've ever done. It's all I've ever seen. It's all it's, this is just my life. My life's different than yours. It's okay. My God loves you the same He loves me. Well, preacher, I got this and I got that. I'm kind of gonna, gonna understand that. Peter had all kinds of reasons. Peter could have whipped out Leviticus 11, Brother Chris. He said, "Here's why. It's right there." We don't do that. Never done that before. But the voice of God 